What happens if I want to make use of a public domain work, but I don't work off of the original, I work off of the translation? And that is tonight's question. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So here is Fyodor Dostoevsky. Follow, seriously, follow me. We're going to go on a little bit of a journey. Dostoevsky was a Russian author who spent four years in a, in a Siberian work camp. And when he got out, he was pretty motivated by it. He wrote a book called Crime and Punishment, which I actually haven't read. I don't even know what it's really about besides probably Crime and Punishment. Uh, the Mental Anguish and Moral Dilemmas of an Impoverished Ex-Student in St. Petersburg who formulates a plan to kill an unscrupulous pawnbroker for her money. He believes that with the money he could liberate himself from poverty. However, once it is done, he finds himself wracked with confusion, paranoia, and disgust. His ethical justifications disintegrate completely as he struggles with guilt and horror and confronts the real-world moral consequences of his deed. Now, we are a copyright channel. We do a lot of copyrights, so we're going to go into some kind of copyright thing right here. So let's take a look. When, when was this book published? Well, 1866 is when the Russian language version was published. But then here's an image from a 1956 Random House printing, which appears to be written in English, at least in its cover. I mean, after all, crime and punishment is pronounced that, not, uh, you know, that that's the Russian spelling of, of the title of the book. Uh, so what happens now to this translation? We have this example of Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky was published in 1866. Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment in the original 1866 Russian language version is no longer under copyright. You can go and read the Russian version and you can make anything you want out of it. You can make your own crime and punishment movie, miniseries, comic strip, whatever you want. However, the 1956 English translation probably isn't off of copyright yet, or at least let's pretend so for a hypothetical. Is it possible that a 1956 book is off of copyright? It's possible. They were supposed to include copyright notices and everything, but I'm going to guess that since it's Random House, Random House is a major, major publisher. They didn't forget the copyright notice. And I'm going to guess that a 1956 English translation of Crime and Punishment is actually still under copyright. Well, wait a second. Copyright only protects the creative expression. A cr expression fixed in a tangible medium. Is a translation really a creative expression. Well, it, you, you could argue it one way or the other, and, and who would really want to go to court, at least unless, unless it was Random House and some other major publisher or somebody who could fight it out with unlimited money? Well, we, we don't have to worry about that because we actually have some help here. If we go to 17 USC 101, this is literally the definitions of copyright, and we scroll down here to what is a derivative work, or if we were simply to start finding translation, then you would see that a derivative work is a work based upon one or more pre-existing works such as a translation, such as a translation, arrangement, dramatization, fictionalization, motion picture version, sound recording, art reproduction, abridgment, condensation, which it means condensing, not, you know, water on the window, but that's what I thought of. And any other form which might be recast, transformed, or adapted. Okay, great. What is a derivative work? Well, I'm going to just take you right there. When we go to 17 USC 106, we get the exclusive rights in copyrighted works, and the right to prepare derivative works is right there. It is right number two. It is 17 USC 106 2. The second copyright is the right to prepare derivative works. So we have right there 
in the 1976 act, we have affirmative black and white text that says a translation is a protected copyrighted work. So then what's left? Does that mean that Random House now owns Crime and Punishment and no one can ever make a derivative work of Crime and Punishment until the copyright expires, until the copyright escheats to the public domain, as we say? No. No, but it does mean that you can't make your version off of the English translation, at least not their English translation. So you might have to commission an English translation, or you might have to find a previous English translation and work off of that one. Now, even if you are working from a translation that is under copyright, you can still separate out what is protected and what is not. The translation owns only the translation. The translation does not own Dostoevsky's underlying characters. But here's how fine a line it becomes. Imagine that there is a character in the, you know, in the fiction book that has a Russian name spelled in a certain way in Russian uh, Cyrillic letters. And imagine you then want to use an English or Americanized name version of that name. You know, Piotr versus Peter, or Arty versus Artyom, or something like that. Um, so I'm thinking of Metro Exodus. That's, that's, that's what I play. So imagine you're going to use that translation. Well, if you use the same character name as the translator did, hey, you're starting to cross the line. Um, but you can still separate out the copyrighted versus the uncopyrighted elements, the plots, the characters, the ideas, the thing. Those are not protected just because somebody translated them, but it's the translation. So you would want to work off of either your own English translation or an uncopyrighted English translation, or you would want to get permission or a license for your English translation and work off of that. And this is a difficult one. This is, this is not a situation where I can tell you one bright line rule applies all of the time. If you want to publish Crime and Punishment, the English translation, well, duh, you can't publish somebody's copyrighted English translation without permission. However, if you wanted to make a play, a silent play, you wanted to make a miming silent play, acting out scenes from Crime and Punishment, you might be able to work off of the English translation to do that because you're not presenting the English translation. You're presenting the underlying thing. And as long as the translation was accurate, great. And there's a catch. We have this case, Feist, Rural Publications versus something telecom. It's a case about phone book companies. Well, phone numbers are facts, and facts, and they're operative facts at that. They get you someplace. They actually do something. So they are not copyrightable. And the plaintiff in Feist, I believe it's Feist, uh, had published a phone book, but had also included fake phone numbers. Well, those fake phone numbers are fictional. They are copyrighted. They are creative. They are minimally creative enough for copyright protection. So be careful that somebody like Random House hasn't put something extra into your translation to catch people who are copying your translation. Maybe you make your silent play, but in your translated version, there's a different scene. There's a scene that's been changed from the original, and you went and you copied the changed scene. Now you have made an unauthorized derivative of the protected part of the translation. So be careful. You really have to be careful that you know the translation is not a... Uh, it, it's not adding anything more than translating. So you really would want to work from the original, really. Work from an unprotected uh, original, work from the unprotected translation, or 
actually get a license to make a derivative work based off the translation. It probably doesn't cost nearly as much as licensing the original, but somebody did have to put considerable effort into a accurate translation of a different language work. I mean, that's the thing, right? If you don't speak the language, you have to be working either from a translation that's public or from mm -hmm. a translation that you had commissioned. And you can prove if you had a translation commi uh, commissioned. So, and if, if you can't prove that you had a translation commissioned, then you do have to disclose to the court which translation you use for yeah. the purposes of the copyright question. Now, here's the thing. I searched today for a Supreme Court decision on copyright in translations. And it seems like no one has ever had an issue that needed to go to that level of adjudication. I'm sure we could search for district court level cases uh, for a little bit more clarity, but uh, at least this is not something that appears to get so much attention that it needs to go to the Supreme Court. So that is our show. Thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal education and legal news channel on YouTube and sometimes on Twitch, and maybe we'll see where else we go. Thank you for your financial support on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsors.com slash law. This channel and its mission would not be possible without your financial support. Thank you very much to our current supporters. At the $50 level in November, thank you to Joe Tyson, Asper Nari, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Snore W, Black Leaf, Benjamin Hytov and Steven. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters scrolling on the LED panel behind me. And the $50 plus supporters just coming across now. And in front of me on the crawl, we'll put some dog or travel B-roll here for your mild entertainment while we outro you. Thank you for joining me again. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. We'll see you in the videos that drop. Have a great weekend. Love you all. Why? This attorney is in his 30s. Or 40s, maybe. And the attorney said this? The attorney lied about his <laughs> grandfather dying. Yes. Yeah, you don't you don't lie to the court. Especially not when you're an officer of the court. Speaking of, I don't know if you guys are coming back a day early or something for me, but thank you. Um, because I'll be able to go to DC. Oh. And you, got, you want the uh, super reviews?